Welcome back to Gay Fat Friend and Friends, the podcast. The podcast for shoppers. You guys, we did so much shopping this weekend. Rob and I really put in some numbers. Uh, and we will talk about that when he gets out here. But how's everybody doing? You having a good week? I hope you are. The weather in Seattle is officially beautiful. Um, the hokas are in bloom. The Patagonia vests have started hibernating. You know, they're in their dormant phase. Um, the Fabletics are beginning to sprout. It's just, it's such a wonderful time to be in Seattle. So book your tickets now. Get here if you can, because this is the time to be in Seattle between April and like, I don't know, mid-September. That's... That's the sweet spot of Seattle. It really is gorgeous right now. The flip side of that is that our grass grows so very quickly and we have the worst lawnmower. Our landlord left a push mower for us to take care of the grass and it's just awful. It's ancient and no one took care of it. And so I can't get it to start and our grass is growing fast and now we're the ugly kid on the block. Uh, our landscaping looks terrible because I can't cut it down. There are bunnies living in our front yard. That's how tall the grass is getting. But I am ready to buy some flowers. I've already begun. I've gotten a, a couple flowers to spruce up the place. And you know what? By May, I'm going to have this place in tip-top shape. I'm going to get this house in fancy neighborhood shape, okay? Anyway, uh, what I wanted to talk about today was that I saw this TikTok of this bartender setting up her bar in North or South Carolina. I can't remember which one. But she said that she was doing a time lapse of setting up her bar and these people happened to come in and kind of interrupt it. But she posted this clip of her being just rude, just absolutely toxic for no reason. And she posted it proudly. And a lot of people in the comments are agreeing with her. But the more and more I watch it, the more I get enraged because she is clearly in the wrong here. And look, I waited tables for 10 years. I get it. Nobody hates a customer more than me. Okay. I got fired for a Yelp review. That's how deep I go into hating working in the service industry. But just like the customer isn't always right, neither is the bartender. So this video starts, she's setting up her bar and these people, they never show up on camera. They're always off camera. But she's setting up her bar and these people come in and she literally just goes, hey, guys, we open it for no hello, no like what's up, anything. She literally just says, hey, guys, we open it for. And you can hear the lady say, like, excuse me, pardon me. And she goes, we open it for and like just totally blank. No, like um, politeness in her. No like customer service. Not that you have to serve people like that. Not that you have to present that way but just very cold and rude. We open it for, and the lady was like, and you can hear it in the, the lady's voice. She goes, she literally says like, oh, did you know your front door is open? And the bartender goes, yeah, we get deliveries and stuff throughout the day. I know it's open. And then a guy in their group goes, well, we deliver a really good time. Just making a dad joke. You can tell he's just a dad joke. There was no like malice behind it. You can hear it in his voice. He did not care. But he was like, well, we deliver a really good time. And she goes, well, you can deliver that good time at four when we open. And she's just a dick through the whole thing. And that's where the video ends. And seriously, people in the comments are just agreeing with her. So hard to lead with all this rudeness and anger. And it just, it is rubbing me the wrong way. I have thought about it so many times this week. Because you don't have to be rude like that. You can be nice. First of all. These people are customers. Who cares about money? Whatever. You don't have to treat customers well if you don't want to, blah, blah, blah. But it clearly is a small business owned by like a mom and pop. It's a small bar. And but they pride themselves on like cocktails and mixology and hipsterness, you know. So it's clearly a, a mom and pop operation. And like. You, you can't just be a dick to customers right off the bat. Like you kind of do have to woo people a little bit. But I think the thing that made me the most mad about it is that she just started with anger, just like started with rudeness. She said, hey, guys, we open it for to like people just walking into a bar. Like if you just walk into a bar expecting to like grab a drink or sit down and you're with friends, like clearly it was like three or four people. If you walk into a bar ready to have drinks with your friends, you're probably not really paying attention to your surroundings and it was i want to say in the comments she said it was three o'clock so it was an hour before they opened so these people were like day drinking or in the mood to day drink probably having a delightful time probably not paying attention but they walked in and the bartender just said 
hey guys, we uh, hey guys, we open at four. She didn't say so sorry, we don't open till four. Or hey guys, I'm still setting up the bar. We don't open till four. I have nothing to offer you. There were so many different things she could have said, but mainly she should have said we don't open until four. She just said, hey, guys, we open at four. That's like a proactive statement. And if you're not really paying attention, it kind of tricks your brain into thinking that's now, you know. So for her to say, hey, guys, we open at four. And then they're like, oh, excuse me. Sorry. What? We open at four, like not using any past tense negative apologetic terms. It was just weird. But then, so a really quick video. I don't even think it's a minute. I think it's like 30 seconds. If you read the comments, the comments just start building and building and building. And I get it. We're all frustrated. The world is frustrating and no one wants to work. And like, I know that working in the service industry sucks. Again, I worked, I waited tables for 10 years and I was fired for a Yelp review. I get how hard it is out there. A Yelp review, I might add, that I did nothing wrong. Like not absolutely nothing wrong. Like the story of my firing is this guy came in and he wanted, so I worked at a lunch restaurant. All of our sandwiches came with chips or a side salad. So he said, can I get soup instead of chips? And I was like, yeah, assuming he understood that it was going to be an extra $2 and again, $2, but he was like, can I get soup instead of chips? And I was like, yeah, I, I just, I wasn't in like the frame of mind to be like, it'll be an extra $2. I just assumed if you order something different, that's clearly not a side of potato chips, it's probably going to be more expensive. But I just said, yeah, I rang him up uh, and he paid for it, but like clearly something was wrong. And then he came back up when his food was ready, like 10 minutes later, he just took it and left. Well, then he wrote this really long review about how, oh, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait. So uh, he paid for it and then he waited the 10 minutes and then he got his food and then he was like, oh, you didn't tell me the soup was going to be extra. And I, I, I'm a jolly person. I guess I chuckled. He said I laughed at him, but I like chuckled. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's $2 extra if you want soup. And then he just took his food and left and I didn't think anything of it. And then he wrote this Yelp review about how like I laughed at him and embarrassed him and made him feel stupid and cheap for not wanting to pay $2 extra for soup. And it was just a total like miscommunication. And uh, he totally did not understand what I was saying or conveying again. I'm a jolly, happy person. I just laugh and chuckle and stuff. I was not like demeaning him whatsoever. I mean, trust me in my career of waiting tables, I had been way ruder to customers. Okay. I had done way worse things, but he wrote this review that I left him, laughed at him and made him feel embarrassed. And then I got fired for that. So I get it how annoying and hard it is to wait tables and bartend and all that stuff. But everybody in the comments just started like piling on and kind of turning the situation in the TikTok into something else. Like people were starting to say, and even the bartender doubled down and posted another video the next day saying like being a bartender is so dehumanizing people treat us like ai they don't think we're real people just talk at us blah 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 all this stuff and i was like that is true and can definitely happen in very busy situations but in this very particular situation right now that you posted on tiktok that did not happen okay no one was rude to you these people were not entitled that was another big thing in the comments everybody was like uh customers are so entitled and it's like where was the entitlement? They walked into a bar that clearly looked like it was open. The front door was wide open and they just walked in and had a less than 30 second exchange with the bartender and then left. There was no entitlement. They didn't like speak to a manager. They didn't complain. And I kind of checked back on this TikTok and her responses. It's not like that group of people even knows that her TikTok went viral. Like they did not complain. They did not leave her a bad review. They just La they left and went to another bar, which is what people do with their money when they want to drink. They're just going to go find somewhere else. So your bar that day didn't get their patronage, but someone else did, you know. But it's so in the comments, everybody was just talking about entitlement and dehumanizing and all this stuff. And I was like, yes, that happens, but it's not fair for you to put those words on this situation. Because in this situation, that bartender was a dick, okay? And it just makes me so angry. And I just... I don't know. I feel like the whole, um, what is it? The, the, the whole concept of, uh, cus like 
oh, what am I trying to say? Uh, the whole concept of like lack of respect and blah, blah, blah. It's get, the lines are getting very blurred. And it's like, she was not disrespected. If anything, those people were disrespected. And it's not fair to other people that are truly disrespected in the service industry to be compared to that situation because it that's it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing at all. So the TikTok is still up and still posted. I th- This is on her personal page, but she posts all about the bar she works at. And I'm like, if I was the owner of that bar, that manager, I don't, I definitely wouldn't fire you for that. I think it's bullshit when people get fired for things. Obviously, I got fired for a Yelp review, but I would probably suggest taking it down. You know, she did take the name of the bar out of the description and, and out of her bio and stuff like that. Like, you can still find it, the name of the bar she worked at. That was the other thing. A lot of people in the comments were like, the hours were clearly posted outside, I bet. They probably just walked right past the sign. And it's like, well, if the front door was wide open, and also, if the out, I don't look at hours when I walk into a thing. If a door is open, I assume it's open. I'm not going to look at the hours. But then I looked it up on Google and I looked at like Street View. There are no hours posted anywhere on that bar. Not the front door, not the window, nothing. There are no hours of operation posted on that bar door via the pictures on Google. So, yeah, people just jump to conclusions and people place, you know, really intense feelings on things because of other situations, but it did not happen in this situation. Everybody was kind of in the wrong and it just makes me so frustrated. So what, what I want to say all this, it takes nothing to be kind. It takes nothing to be nice. Like, and just use your words. I feel like so much confusion in the world happens because people aren't using words and not using words properly to just say, Hey guys, we open at four instead of being like, Hey, so sorry. We don't open till four is a totally different sentence. That means totally different things. And if both of those sentences were hurled at you, one would feel okay. And the other one feels shitty. So that's my rant for the day. <laughs> um, I, I just had to get that off my chest. I didn't want to like make a TikTok about it or, or post about it online because I, I, it, I don't have any dogs in this fight. I don't really need to get into it, but I just I needed to say it out loud. Sometimes you just need to say things out loud to a, a gentle, loving, receptive ear, and then it's done. Not, it, it doesn't have to go past that. So anyway, uh, that's my rant for the day. And I think it's time to get little Robbie man out here so we can talk about all the shopping we did this weekend. So without further ado, here he is. It's Rob. Yay! Hello. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Hello. How, how's it going? Good. You look great in your garbage hoodie. Hey. If could- you listened to last week's episode. This is the payoff here. Yeah. But yeah, I, I couldn't do it during the story, at least. Just it would have been too much. It would have been too many layers. Yeah, just I mean, too much. Wearing the garbage hoodie to buy the garbage record to then return the garbage record. While telling, yeah, the story in it. No. Uh, telling the story of that in the garbage hoodie. It would have been too much garbage. No. Too much garbage. Garbageception. Like, it's too much. <laughs> but you look great. Well, thank you. I like So do hat. you. Oh, thanks. Oh, like, th- my, like my Narc hat? Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Hello, fellow teens. I, I'm not here to buy drugs. I love a plain... No label, no nothing, just a yeah. plain colored hat. You FBI? Are you FBI? You have to tell me. Seriously, if you're a cop, you have to tell me, you know. So, uh, But you having a good morning? It is Sunday, a beautiful, beautiful Sunday here in Seattle. You yeah. having a good morning so far? Yeah, just just sitting next to a very lazy oh, puppy yeah. this morning. She is tired. Ruby was so cuddly this morning. Seriously, she's just like sprawled across the sofa with her face on a pile of pillows, just uh, looking at you being like, you want to scratch my chin? Yeah. You, you can. Want, you want to give me pets? I mean, it's so funny. Like, she was rescued from the beach in Mexico. Like, she is a Mexican dog who was very much used to heat. But when the weather warms up, she just gets sleepier and sleepier. Uh, she weirdly had more energy all winter when it's freezing cold outside. But now that it's warming up and it's ice outside, she's like, this is my time to shine. And by shine, I mean sleep. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit like during the winter, though, she found like all the little hot spots in the house. Like every little vent, she found a place to lay in front of it. Yeah. Oh, she's such a little just. She loves a sunspot. Oh. oh, she's so cute. We love her Seriously, so much. I just thinking about her. I'm like, mm, yeah, I wish she was here right now, even though she's just upstairs. She's just right above us sleeping on the sofa. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what I wanted to talk about is bitches be shopping. We did so much shopping this weekend. Oh yeah. (laughs) But it's like, it was part utility shopping. Like we had to do it and then part fun shopping. Well, yeah, I bought clothes, which I buy clothes. Like, I don't know. Well, once, I mean, aside from like hoodies, which I buy way too many of. I was going to say, you buy like five hoodies a week. Yeah. (laughs) No. (laughs) 
That's a little much, but yeah, <laughs> I, I love a hoodie. But like, you know, I bought like jeans, which I buy a pair of jeans like I don't know every two, three years. Yeah, you're very much kind like, of in your like dad mode of like jeans. Oh, I there's a hole in these ones now. Time to replace. Right. I work from home. I most people don't know if I'm wearing pants, let alone if they are actually <laughs> like you know hard pants or soft pants. So like, yeah, it uh, jeans. Where am I going that's so formal that I need jeans? <laughs> Which is so crazy to me because the one I, I would say one of the main things I'm jealous of you of, and you know what, it's fine to have jealousy in a relationship. Shut up. But the one thing one thing I'm jealous of you is that you have like a tiny body that can pretty much buy clothes in any store. That is an oversimplification though, because yeah, seriously, I, like it is hard. Like we are both at extremes of the sizing uh spectrum. If there's a stack of shirts, he buys the one on top and I buy the one on bottom. Yeah. Like it's so funny. Well, it is funny because like for me being a generally smaller man, I am like a medium in most shirts. Yeah, at you're, least. You're, you're beefy. But you're yeah, beefy like I'm a, th- I'm a thick guy. But um but it's funny, like when it comes to to pants though, like I still have a hard time because I at least it's gotten better with the advent of the stretch denim. Yeah. Um same. super helpful because I got big ass quads and I have thick calves. And they, the whole experience is very short. So, like, I need a 28-inch inseam, which is that's rare. that's children's jeans. It's very rare. <laughs> uh, and, like, yeah, that means you're getting, like, a 24-inch waist, which uh, I don't have anymore. So, like, yeah, it's it's hard because I feel like, you know, I'm a person who are the jeans bunch. They're either, you know, dragon under, under my heel or they are bunched. Yeah. And then you have to get them hemmed and then they have to get it professionally done. And then you either look like you're wearing formal jeans all the time somehow or <laughs> like, you know, it's just there's a lot that can go wrong there. So, well, it's, yeah. And it is funny, like you do wear out jeans more than anyone I know, like between the crotch blowing out, the knees like tearing and ripping natural holes, which is the style now to yeah. have holy jeans. But and then the bottoms, because the jeans usually fold under your heel so they get a little fray and wear yeah. where i've been i'm walk on it yeah you know um so. especially because i wear a lot of flip-flops and so to save the jean from going underneath the shoe i tuck it under my heel yeah and i walk around on and eventually they jeans. turn into spats <laughs> and they just lay up, up lay upon your foot and also all shorts are capris uh yes. you know they don't hug the knee but like they're all Long. Seriously, like I've been so excited to get into the six inch and five inch inseam because I love like a short short. Those are board shorts. That just looks like shorts on you. Yeah, those are board (laughs) shorts on me. Like I need like a square cut swimsuit to basically look like a normal swimsuit. Yeah. You know, and so it's it's a little hard. Um yeah. So like it's you know, like we all have our issues when it comes to buying clothes, but at least there's I at least have discovered it and that like what express men not a paid advertisement here. They make jeans and stretch denim. I literally buy skinny jeans yeah. from them because Honestly, of the I don't know how we lived before stretch denim because even in stretch denim, sometimes my thighs and my legs and my knees, like when I sit down or squat or something, I'm like, oof, I'm glad there's a little give here because oh. I don't know how else I would have done it. I can't tell you how many times back in the day I would like try on a pair of jeans and be like, this is perfect. And then I would try to tie a shoe and I'm like, oh, <laughs> these are not perfect. Yeah. You know, or sit down. And yeah, it's just one of those where it's like, oh, this is, this is not going to work. I um, guess. I am just lucky to have grown up in high school at the end of the 90s when wide leg and ultra wide leg jeans were in fashion, which they are back again. It, that was weird walking through the mall, seeing a lot of uh, high school fashions. We went to Urban Outfitters and it is all 90s all the time. And it's it was such a weird feeling. Like it kind of felt like I was having like a f- flashback or something. Everything at Urban Outfitters right now. I don't think, did we go any other teen stores? We, we went to PacSun. PacSun, by the way, is so strange to me. I didn't realize that they'd fully rebranded away yeah. from Pacific Sunwear into PacSun with like a very adult font. And walking in, their color palette, this season at least, is the gap. Especially the gap from the 90s. Yeah. It's all white, denim, and khaki. And yeah, like a lot of beige. Uh, it's, it's weird. Like walking in there, it just looks like someone boiled all the nutrients out out of all the clothes like there's no excitement in there right now at least but maybe that's the that's the vibe right now yeah. but it's my walking in i was like this looks like the gap and it is so sterile in there and i'm used to pack sun being loud and kind of brash and just colorful and you know a little bit more exciting yeah um but like that was my teenage look because yeah like I, jinko jeans man they mm-hmm. were that you know high school because they fit at the waist so they pleased the school <laughs> dress code that i had yeah. but they also had you know legs that could accommodate my stumps a a roomy leg yeah 
That's why I wore Jinkos and kickwear. I wore the ultra wide leg. I like that looked like I was wearing two like Pentecostal prairie skirts on each leg. It's like I didn't have like the comically wide uh, pant openings, but I could fit a two liter bottle of soda in my back pocket because the pockets were so yeah, deep. The pockets are so deep. You could put like a whole skateboard in them. Um, I, those have not yet made a comeback. The ultra, ultra wide legs, like the 60 inch kickwares, they have not made a comeback yet, but I'm sure they will. I feel like raver culture needs to make a full on comeback first. I mean, which has never really gone away. It is kind of back. But yeah, like I think that was such a, it was leaning into that so hard, yeah. but also meeting with like skate culture. There was something so slackery and, and fun about it. I feel like I see more and more people, especially like young people. I, I see more young people on Instagram going to uh, like EDM music festivals and stuff it's it's definitely getting bigger but meanwhile though we did just watch part of the coachella set and we saw orbital oh. and we saw all the people our age there yeah. like the uh, the, the orbital, orbital show set. was very much like the people that i saw back at coachella back in the early aughts yeah we've been watching a lot of the live feeds of coachella this weekend and uh there's a lot of like gen x heavy bands like deftones blur we watched the whole no doubt set it was great but Everybody old. Yeah, it's very Gen X, old. elder millennial. Right now, it is 100% catering to our age group. Yeah. Um, this, I feel like that. it's definitely like the same kind of pocket of like the 90s when we were in high school and like the Stones and everybody doing stuff for our parents. Like yeah. this is this, we're we're at that level now, and it was it was very it was an, again another weird feeling like walking into Urban and seeing all the clothes from my youth. Also, in five years, Coachella will basically be uh, warped tour meets the electronic nighttime yeah. part. Yeah. It's going to basically be you know that yeah. I think in in within a decade. Well, I mean, even if like Lady Gaga performed next year or something, like she's already catering to elder gen what. X, Gen she, Y's, she also, Gen Z's. Yeah, I mean, she's got some little monsters. Like, they're definitely younger than us. Yeah. Um, so. But yeah, so it's just, aging is weird. That's what we're getting at. Oh, a friend texted me a uh, screenshot that she she took from uh, either someone's Instagram or, or TikTok where it was somebody being like, who is this Deftones? They're so fascinating. A unique sound for Coachella, but I really enjoyed it. Nine out of ten, which I was like, I'm thrilled that they enjoyed Deftones because they do a, a good live show. Actually, seeing them live is what made me a fan yeah. of Deftones. However... Um, I have never felt more old in my entire life. Uh, oh, another one, Sublime. They 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 kind of did like they pulled a journey and got a new lead singer who he's adorable. Like he sound he almost sounds he's like doing a good Brad. Yeah, he almost sounds like him. Uh, he's he's he did a really good job, but the set was really fun and like all the kids were very much into Sublime and even no doubt she did like they did a lot of their early stuff. It was a lot of ska and a lot of punk. Uh, I guess it's not really punk, but like. Between Sublime and No Doubt, like, the kids were all skanking, you know? And uh, it was funny to see Gwen Stefani skanking on stage. I was like, oh, wow, we're bringing skanking back. Seriously, next year, Skankin' Pickle and uh, oh, what's the the band that did the, the the cover of Come On Eileen that was used at the end of 10 oh, Things yeah. I Hate About You or with that band? Say Ferris. Yeah. I was like, you, give, yeah, give it a couple years. Yeah, it's it's that, and that's the next wave of music to come back. We're going to oh, get a ska wave. Oh, my God, I totally became that person on the podcast for a second that's like, oh, I can't think of this thing. Everybody and like, is in their car and screaming. Yeah, which at least I did come up with it fairly quickly. Thank you. So yeah. We also that. have two... Google devices in front of us. We like, do. We need to incorporate these better. Yeah. <laughs> and I just lobbed my phone over there, of course, which I could go get yeah. for more research. But no, uh, so what I wanted to say is, so Friday we went to Costco and we just, we did. That's an important essential our, like, business Our monthly thing. Costco shop, which we had to do. Yeah. Um, especially like, I feel like when I'm quote unquote dieting and watching, uh, watch them a figure, we go to Costco more because you could just get lots of fresh food. I eat so much fresh food, well, fresh food when I'm dieting. There's like, a lot of your prepared stuff too that kind of yeah. just simplifies your, your life there. Co Costco has what I need when I'm counting calories. But um, so we go a lot more frequently, but which I'm still, by the way, very impressed by the boiled egg situation that we got at Costco this week. Oh yeah. Just like the sheer number of egg to dollar they do like pre-processed hard-boiled eggs pre-peeled in a vacuum sealed bag or whatever it's like two per serving i think and there's 16 of them so it's 32 eggs and it was like 13 bucks i was like that's yeah. cheaper that's than buying the eggs and doing it yourself about what eggs are yeah like it's it's i think it's a little pricier than a carton of eggs uh, per egg value but it takes out the time of boiling and peeling which i feel like i've done every hard-boiled egg trick known to man to get a, a beautifully peeled egg it never works i've used Fresh eggs. I've used old eggs. I've used room temperature eggs. I've done the spoon trick. I've done salted water. I've done cold water. It, like every time I've tried to do hard boiled eggs like the right way, they never peel properly. Except the one time that they exploded. 
<laughs> that was word of advice yeah. don't put on eggs to boil and then go watch the oprah lance armstrong interview it's just too captivating it's too captivating and i made a mistake and i totally forgot and i i left i think there was like three or four i didn't do that many eggs it i want to say it was i, mean, I, I think wait. it was only three or four it was because like it, there was a specific order in which they exploded yeah. Which was very remarkable at the time. But so I, I put these three eggs on to boil and I went back to the bedroom. This was in L.A. years ago. Went back to our bedroom, which is fairly far from it's the like, kitchen. We had just moved into that apartment, by the way. It was early in Maybe our like time. like six months. Yeah, it was early in that time because like we were finding the eggs for so long while we lived there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I put, put the eggs on to boil and went to watch the Lance Armstrong Oprah interview and spaced out. And then all of a sudden towards well, the end. Well, let me take over from here because here's where I was involved with the eggs. So you were in the living room playing oh, yeah. the video. Oh, yeah. In the living room, I was playing uh, the Devil May Cry remake, uh, D- or DMC, the reboot. Uh, great. So game. funny you remember exactly what well, game. It, it was. It was great. It was a good game. Um, and uh, all of a sudden, I smell something kind of burning. But I was like, "Well, is that? Oh no! Is this like a technological overheating situation?" So I literally was like, "You know, what? I'm gonna stop for now." So I turned off my console just in case, because like, you never know. I was like, "I'll give it a break." Um, and then I'm like, no, I still smell it. And I walk into the kitchen and I'd forgotten he was cooking eggs. Uh, and I look at the, the pan, thank you, the pot and it, the water is gone. Yeah. And all of the, uh, shells are brown. They were not brown eggs. It was a gas stove, by the way. Yeah. Which is like already hot. Yeah. And so like, these are just eggs now Like the shells have literally started to like char. Uh, and so I was like, oh God. And so the first thing I do, I don't even think I turned off the heat. First thing I did was I grabbed the handle of the pan just to move it off the heat. And as soon as I touched that, I realized the handle is incredibly hot. And I literally just went, ah, and I just sort of dropped it. And like the pan wasn't even lifted that much, but it was enough to sort of just jostle Jostle, it just enough. And literally one egg just, it popped and it sounded like a gunshot a full-on gunshot it was one of the loudest noises i've ever heard and it was right there at, at my hands yeah. at arm's length and i my response was to take cover and just yell and i ran to the other side of the kitchen toward the fridge as the second one <laughs> i think it might have been three eggs because like then the second one yeah. blew and i just kept screaming <laughs> And then Todd comes running in like, what? from oh my the God, bedroom. Because it sounded like gunshots. And our apartment had the longest hallway in Los Angeles. And he comes like running down the hallway into the kitchen. And he's like, is everything okay? And I was like, I literally just started screaming obscenities and pointing at him about Screaming. how mad I was about these damn eggs. And as soon as I was done yelling, the last <laughs> egg popped. And so it was like, I was finally like calm and I was done. And then, <laughs> bah! And it was the loudest, scariest thing. And so Todd Lee's got to witness one of them. Literally, if you wanted to produce it as like a sketch, that the timing was so perfect. And I was like shaking. I was so scared and mad. And then like then now the entire kitchen smelled like smelled like boiled, boiled egg. eggs. Like yeah, well, burnt boiled eggs. Yeah. Uh, it At was least the grossest it wasn't thing. like rotten or sulfur, but it was just it was eggs. Yeah. And, and there was no escape. Even when they were going off. My brain never said, oh, fuck the eggs. Like, I was like, those are gunshots. Someone is in our house shooting. I was kind of proud of myself that I just ran straight toward, like, I was like, I got to protect Rob. I don't, you know. Uh, so I just ran straight towards the crime scene. Um, but yeah, then it exploded. And they, they disintegrated into the tiniest bits of egg and shell you've ever seen and covered the whole kitchen. Like, we Rob was not kidding. We found bits of egg for the next nine years that we lived in that apartment. We found them under appliances. Somehow. Under appliances, behind picture frames, like like underneath everything. There was literally. I, I was cleaning up, just like the the initial crime scene cleanup took a week, and I finally got it to a livable place. And then forever, we found an eggshell randomly, like underneath a spice in the spice cabinet. Yeah. Like, but and we literally slept with the window open in the kitchen I think, for two nights to, to clear out that smell. And it's funny, and we never really slept with the window open in LA uh, ever. I mean, yeah, like, we never were ground floor. It was just not something. We didn't yeah. have bars on the windows. But yeah, it was like that was a uh, fun tangent on that it one. It almost yeah, smelled, it, like, it, it almost gave like a burning hair smell. So it was like burnt, e- burnt and egg, <laughs> you know, combined. <laughs> Oof, it was yeah. gnarly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, back to Costco. Yeah, sorry. All of that to say, now we got. Pre hard boiled and peeled eggs. I haven't tried them yet. And though. seriously, like I'm just I'm I'm astonished at the price. I just am. Yeah. Like that was cool. It was a lot it was a lot of eggs for about what eggs cost, yeah. but the work of boiling them and peeling them has been done for you. Thanks, Costco. Right. And they're organic, not a thing I care about at all, but they were organic. So 
Uh, but yeah, so we did Costco. Pretty uneventful trip. Uh, we always usually kind of go on a Friday afternoon after Rob gets off work, and uh, it wasn't too crazy. Um, we did order a whole pizza. Rob was like, can I get a pizza? And I was like, sure, I'm going to get a rotisserie chicken and I'll eat chicken for dinner. You have pizza. And uh, we didn't realize that you're supposed to kind of like order it before you shop so it's ready by the time you leave. Yeah, so that was a to, mistake. So we had to sit there for like a half an hour waiting for pizza to get done, which wasn't a problem. And then there, there was a bit of a mix up at the end. Like Rob finally got the pizza. And as he's walking to the door, luckily you checked it. I don't know why I thought to check it. Um, he wanted pepperoni. We, we ordered pepperoni and the guy handed him a cheese pizza. And I'm yeah. glad we checked. Yeah. So I ran back and it turns out they gave me somebody else's pizza, which honestly a cheese pizza wouldn't have bothered me, but it certainly would have ruined someone else's day. Yeah. Uh, if you made a point to not get meat on your pizza. Um, so it worked out. And I got the right one. But yeah, it was just like literally I was like, I don't know, 30 feet away and I was having to flip it around and be like, that's not right. Yeah. And came right back. It was kind of funny, though. Like, I feel like Rob doesn't really eat anything from the Costco uh, concession stand at all. Like, it's just not his. Although I do love those chicken bakes, but we usually just buy the frozen ones. We buy the frozen ones, but also I don't think they sell them anymore. They do. Do they? Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't see them. But usually whenever we get stuff from the Costco food court, we get it and literally instantly leave. Yeah. I don't think I've ever sat at a Costco table and eaten food. I haven't sat at a Costco table and eaten food since I went with my mom went, like before I could drive. Yeah. I feel like it's been forever. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of fascinating to watch the food court operate for 20 minutes while we sat at a table. But it was it was kind of crazy. Like, like I talked about before you got here, I talked about working in the restaurant industry and stuff. People are crazy, uh, especially at, at Costco. I feel like there's some kind of hormone that's released when you're at Costco that gets your like adrenaline up and you're just like in a place and in a zone and you get very excited. It's almost like Disneyland. Uh, but people just get so intense at the Costco food court and there's just like yelling of numbers and orders being ready and people crowding the counter waiting for their hot dog to come up and yeah, it was it was very fascinating and intense and I'm glad we got out of there in one piece. Yes, me too. Um, and then worth it though the pizza was great and then like we said Saturday we originally Saturday we were going to do a whole bitches be shopping day we were going to go to just the get mall. everything done we were going to go to the mall and then cheesecake factory and then we were going to go up to Costco and just do it all yesterday which would have taken hours I'm so glad we split it up because even I think the whole Costco trip round trip was two hours and I was exhausted. I was like, I need to eat dinner and go to bed. This is too much. It's I'm very exhausted. Costco takes all of my energy now. Well, and at least like it's funny, unloading the car now is so much easier than it was. Cause I remember like when we lived in LA and we went to Costco, it was Ugh. a thing where like we literally had to park in like in front of a fire hydrant in front of our house to like empty yeah. the car and then we would have to park where it actually goes. And it was just a lot of process where you felt like you moved everything like three times. Our kitchen and pantry were very far from the front door and from the street. So yeah. like unloading Costco when we lived in LA was very much a long process yeah and it was just like seriously how many times can i lift this one tin of coffee like oh four times to get it from the car (laughs) to where it finally goes great yeah yeah fun but now we can actually just pull in the garage and open the back of the car and take stuff out i mean (sighs) it's still in the basement and we have to bring it upstairs but it's a lot easier yeah just a you know part of growing up we don't have to worry about getting a, a ticket um but then yeah saturday so saturday we went to the mall and that was an experience the malls in seattle are jumping i know that malls like in other places like in st louis whenever i go home to visit my family and friends a lot of malls in the midwest are dead and they're all just like bible stores and mom and pop like junk shops and half the mall is empty but the malls in seattle and the malls in la too are jumping yeah well i mean there's some dead malls in like suburbs i you know we we from like friends of tiktok that uh are documenting malls that are dying in nearby areas but yeah like the the bellevue mall Jumping, yeah, like huge, very like busy, full on like mall from the nineties. Like every store is is open and popular, and yeah, like the only closed store right now was an Amazon bookstore actually, and they yeah. they closed it just recently. That's so I mean, Amazon closed all of those. Yeah, I feel like the only closed stores are even recently closed and are likely to get filled. And there's a lot of like uh, you know mall scaffolding saying like coming soon, new stores. So. Yeah, it's a pretty jumping mall. Yeah, and, it, and they actually had like people there walking around doing stuff. Like the stores you went into were busy. Yeah, it's it looks like uh, the youth of Seattle have discovered malls because it very much felt like a childhood of like drop the kids off at the mall, or you know when you're like 15, you're like take the kids to the mall. That's the cool thing to do. It was very there was a lot of kids. Well, and like there is a certain magic about the mall when you can't drive because at least it's a place where you know you get to one place and then it's walking and there's kind of everything. Or at yeah. least you know. Well, Most and like things. food and treats and then also new clothes and uh, Urban has like a pretty good record section, even yeah. though it was out of order. And It was yeah. hilariously organized or or not rather. But yeah, it's like, seriously, it's the one place in the in 
It's the only store I've actually ever seen a copy of Khalees Tasty in the wild. <laughs> which that makes it a winner in in my book that is quite possibly one of the most perfect pop records yeah ever. that's real good um but then so rob went to express and got some jeans and some underwears yup and uh yeah i went to bath and body works and dropped some numbers i got some new smell good body sprays got a ton of hand soaps uh what else did i get oh i got one of those like refillable hand soap systems with the glass bottle i'm very excited well, like, exactly. I've been using it for my my cherry merlot soap down here in the basement, and it's been magical. It's a treat, y'all. Everybody's afraid to turn forty, but you know what? It, there are exciting times. You get excited about the littlest, <laughs> stupidest stuff. Like, we also went to the Lego store, and I got my last. Like I buy all the Lego flowers, except for the red roses because I think they're ugly. But I buy all the Lego flowers and the succulents and the little terracotta pots for the last one to complete the collection. So, we went to the Lego store and got some Legos. Like which consistently, the nicest staff. Oh my Anywhere. god! Lego stores literally hire the best people, and they're all like high school kids. Like yeah, they're all, all just really like young really friendly. sweet and really just ready to help people out. Nice, nice kids. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so we did a lot of shopping, and it was a good time. Uh. And I think, having said that, I think it's time to move on because we did eat at the Cheesecake Factory, which is always if you go to the mall, you got to go to Cheesecake Factory. Uh, so let's move on to our final segment, which is what's your order? What's your order? I realized Cheesecake Factory is not in here. I did refill the box. It was Rob. an interesting segue that kind of worked. <laughs> you know, I'll give uh, notes live on the podcast. But we have completed almost all of the fast food. There are a couple fast foods in here. And now we're moving on to fast, fast casual. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, I think without further ado, let's shake up the box and uh, – Rob, you want to pull it out this oh, time? Sure. Whoa. Whoa. Hey, hey, hey. This is a family show. All right. Today's restaurant is Dairy Queen. Oh, this, you know, one of the two fast food restaurants left in the box. Ooh, man. That is actually, I'm going to have to look at their menu. No, you don't. I'll just remind you. Okay, cool. Thank you. Because I was like, oh, no. Uh, wow, Dairy Queen. So uh, in well, my hometown. Speaking of mall, I mean, oh, wait, let's do your thing. Oh, yeah, that's the thing, too. In in California, Dairy Queen is like a food court restaurant. Yeah, like the only Dairy Queens I knew of were in malls, usually in a double stall with an Orange Julius. Yeah. So, like, I actually don't, like, the most exposure I've had to Dairy Queen's food is either from TV ads or... Up here. Up here. In Seattle. Because, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, there are no Dairy Queens in L.A. And so and I grew up. And a frozen up, treat place. That is it. Yeah, it's usually just they only do the ice cream ver- uh, yeah. versions up there in L.A. in mall food courts. But I grew up with Dairy Queen. And it's funny, in my hometown, Dairy Queen was like where all the popular girls worked. It was almost, I, They almost specifically hired girls. And it was all the, like, sports girls, like, all the girls from like volleyball and softball ran the Dairy Queen. I feel like that was the hot dog on a stick uh, See, at my mall. Like, yeah, that's very, very. That sounds very West Coast. Yeah, <laughs> uh, which I've never eaten a hot dog on a stick. Nor have I. I had a lemonade from there once, but good lemonade. I always assumed it was like Dairy Queen, and then I saw it, and I was like, oh, I don't think that's Dairy Queen. <laughs> it's a total. It's lemonade and hot dogs. Hey, corn dogs. Uh, oh, corn dogs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Dairy Queen was like kind of one of the cool places to work in high school. And it was almost only girls. Like, I don't think any boys worked there. It was just girls. But I love Dairy Queen. Um, I used I one of the things I loved about Dairy Queen is I don't know if they still have them because, again, we don't either that often. And now that we do go to the ones up here, we just kind of a la carte pick things off the menu. We don't order their like combos or anything. But they had a thing called a full meal deal. And it was before McDonald's had combos like there was a time when McDonald's did not have combos and uh, Dairy Queen was like the first one to kind of do combos and they were called full meal deals. And you got a burger and fries and a soda. And then you also got a Sunday. But when you ordered the full meal deal, they gave you a metal coin and it was kind of big too, kind of like a 50 cent piece, a big metal coin for the Sunday. Oh. So you could eat. And then bring the coin back for your Sunday. Which I like that. Was supposed to happen in the same sitting, but you could turn in a coin for a Sunday whenever. So people would like, you know, keep them for later. Keep them for later. Or you find one friend. on the floor and be like, "Oh my god, a free Sunday!" Like I think the coin just said "free Sunday" or something. Yeah, so, that's cool. I like yeah, that. It was like a, a a little like fun treasure transaction to well, do, especially a kid like take this coin and turn it in for a Sunday. Hell yeah, that's an adventure. Well, and especially as somebody who is lactose intolerant and isn't super into ice cream unless I really want to be, like 
that's a fun thing away. I can just hand off to somebody because yeah. like I'm not gonna use it. I don't want to waste it. Like that's actually pretty cool. But I was I love like their burgers are pretty much flame grilled kind of like Burger King. So they have good burgers. I like their burgers. But they were one of the first fast foods to introduce chicken strips. And they still to this day serve it with white gravy, which is so weird. I don't like who's dipping their chicken strips in this gravy. See, and meanwhile, that is actually like if you're going to give me a sauce. But it's not gravy. good gravy. That's the thing. It's good like, gravy. <laughs> it doesn't taste like anything. Like, like when it comes to white pepper gravy, it's not like the best one. I know, but like it, I would much rather a gravy than like a honey mustard or a ranch. Like I'm not, like I'm I'm not a ranch guy. No, and so a, like that's what, gravy is much more my speed. Ranch is my lord and savior, so I want ranch all the time. But now Dairy Queen has a partnership with actual Hidden Valley, so you can oh. get legit Hidden Valley Ranch at Dairy Queen now, which is what we do. Um, but now Dairy Queen has kind of kind of dipped their toes into what I like to call fair food, which is fan just food. They, fan they food. self call it fan food. Oh, I thought Sonic did that. No, no, no. They, they don't make fast food. They make fan food oh. at Dairy Queen. But yeah, so like the weird, weird deep fried things. The uh, fact that they have cheese curds. But that's what I was going to say. Sorry. That's your order. Yeah. Um. So, but my order now and has been for quite some time is the chicken strip basket, which comes with Texas toast, delicious buttery Texas toast. You're not getting that anywhere else. Oh. Uh. And so um, good. yeah, and then the cheese curds are so good, and it's just fried cheese. But who doesn't like fried cheese? Yeah, and then you can dip it in actual Hidden Valley. It's so good. And then my favorite dessert. I'm a Blizzard Blizzard guy. I love the whole inverted thing. It's super I love fun. blizzards. I always have the the dark years. You know, we refer to it as Nam when they uh, lost Snickers. When they the Snickers Blizzard is top tier, the best Blizzard you can get. And um, there was a, about. I don't know, five or six years where Dairy Queen couldn't make a deal with Snickers. So Snickers pulled their candy from Dairy Queen and it was like, well, what's the point of coming here? We're not coming here then. Uh, they also had, I don't know if they still do it anymore, but they had a breeze, which was a frozen yogurt blizzard. Mm. Uh, and I very much liked the breeze because there was like a tang to it, but I don't think they make breezes anymore. I don't think they have Froyo or uh, Frogurt. I don't think they have Frogurt anymore. I think it's only ice cream, but ooh, a Snickers blizzard. And if I'm really feeling myself, a, Double candy, so a double candy Snickers Blizzard, that is, whew, I'm, my mouth is watering. I'm sure you can hear it right now. That is my favorite dessert from Dairy Queen. Um, oh, that was the other thing. They also were the first to introduce cookie dough as a topping in the '90s. So like that was a big deal, getting a cookie dough Blizzard, and then I went back to Snickers. So, but yeah, you usually just get chicken strips and cheese curds. That's all. Okay, because yeah, I was like, I think the last time we went, yeah, it was it was probably a chicken strip combo, cheese curds, uh, maybe onion rings also. Uh, oh, yeah, onion rings. They yeah, have good onion rings. and then um, and I think I have had a burger there because I think they had like a buttery burger at one point as like a promotional thing, and it was delicious. Oh, like yeah, I, yeah. I, so I, I have, I've had more beef from Dairy Queen than I've had from McDonald's. <laughs> Which is so weird, given that like Dairy Queen is such a weird anomaly in my world. Well, and it's funny. I was thinking back to actually like uh, the pandemic back in the day. I remember during like the safer at home time, we actually after many many months when people kind of started venturing out, but we were still shut ins. Um, one of our first adventures was actually to drive like forty five oh, minutes yeah. north up to Valencia to go to the closest Dairy Queen that we could, and we sat. Uh, with the hatch of our car open and just sat in the back of it on the bumper and had blizzards, yeah. um, which I hadn't had in probably over a decade. Uh, and um, yeah, that was fun. That was like one of those like first real like kind yeah. of adventures. It was still out. 2020, I want to say. Oh, like, yeah, like, like we were- My like, birthday. It was my birthday and I turned, that was my 40th birthday. Oh my God, was that what that was for? I turned 40 in 2020 during the pandemic, so I yeah. didn't get any kind of like vacation or treat. It was super, yeah, just kind of like a birthday deferred. So I just turned 40, great, no, no pomp and circumstance, but we did, we drove up like an hour to Valencia and went to the freestanding- Dairy Queen because there's again there's there's that's like the only one in all of Southern California. Seriously, I mean, because yeah, like the the one I knew was you know in the mall that and I worked at growing up. It was ice cream only. It was a freestanding Dairy Queen, but they didn't have burgers and stuff. Yeah, I don't think they had a full menu. It's just dessert. I mean, that's very much the Southern California way on that. I mean, I imagine they've got to start opening that up, given that their full ad campaign is about their you know fan food. Yeah. Um. Well, and then uh, the other thing, like the one last thing about Dairy Queen is. That was the only ice cream cake you could get growing up for us. Oh. We didn't have Baskin Robbins. We didn't have anything else. Because, yeah, that is the cake in my 
in my brain. I didn't I was know say, there was another is, option. Yeah, what is your uh, ice cream cake? Is no. it Baskin Robbins? Yeah, Baskin Robbins. I mean, but like I grew up with uh, Baskin Robbins. Oh, and uh, we also had Penguins growing up, which was a frozen yogurt place, but they kind of had like more firm ice cream cake yeah, yeah, style yeah. options. But like when you went there, it was more of a, a yogurt experience but um but yeah like it was uh because like i when vegas we had tcby but i don't know if they did cakes um and then yeah in the antelope valley we had penguins and then we had uh baskin robbins yeah. which is funny because it was always baskin robbins it was never 31 flavors that that that's oh, didn't they that's try like, to, like rebrand or something? i don't know but that's like people who call soda pop to me it's like 31 <laughs> flavors Same. That's, that's just that doesn't it's make like, sense oh, i don't call it that get away from yeah me. yeah Ooh, ah. <laughs> Welcome to Earth. It is Baskin Robbins. Yeah, but yeah, the dairy, oh, the Dairy Queen ice cream cake, and I only ever got it at like school birthday parties or something. Like my mom, we did not have ice cream cakes in our home ever. I only got them at other places, but it was always from Dairy Queen, and they have that like crunchy. That I think it was like Oreo bits in fudge as the middle layer. Mm -hmm. The only thing with a, a Dairy Queen cake is like they use the soft serve to make it, but then they freeze it and it gets hard, and it's like. If you really want to enjoy a Dairy Queen ice cream cake, you got to let it sit out for like a half an hour before you cut into it because otherwise it's just like hard to eat. I don't know. Well, not not the, really an ice cream cake kind of person. It's funny because they're a thing that they always seem great in theory and then I'm always – as I'm eating it, I'm always like, oh, I either wanted ice cream or I wanted cake. And when the two get together, it's just like – gloopy two frozen like one of them's like it's going you're going to sacrifice either the cake or the ice cream in the experience like yeah. one of them is going to not be what you wanted mm -hmm. um for them to share uh, a bite i feel like that's kind of your eating philosophy a lot of things you don't like to mix a ton of things you're like if i'm going out for this i want this I yeah don't want this and this but yeah like, and then meanwhile though like you know there's those little experiences that were like you just have to listen to the rest of the world to realize how good they are together yeah like for example i never put together how good a coffee with a donut was until i was like in my mid-20s and like i drank coffee as a teen like i was a coffee drinker yeah. and i've always loved a donut but i always had chocolate milk with a donut well it's so funny you're you literally dip donuts in coffee which is so that's very cartoony and very weird and i don't like that it is it, <laughs> it, it is so funny i did not realize how magical just a black coffee with a donut was um well you've always been old it's so good like seriously <laughs> I, I i was meant to be like a cop in a 70s movie apparently yeah uh because oh man they're good <laughs> Well, uh, thanks for listening, you guys. That's been another uh, episode of Gay Fat Friend and Friends with Rob. Hey. hey. And uh, let us know what your Dairy Queen order. If you like to go to the DQ, you'll always have a place at the DQ. Just drive through and get a Coke if you're thirsty. Um, but yeah, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. And uh, yeah, have a great week. All right. We love you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.